Guitarist Carl G. Marisi and Nick Fortuna, together with bassist Curtis Bachman, were recruited to join the Centuries in 1965. G. Marisi and Bachman, along with keyboardist Dennis McCullis, later joined another band, The Pulsations, which also include drummer John Polos and vocalist George Legros and Dennis Tufano. After winning a local battle of the band's competition in late 1965, the Pulsations were hired as the house band of WGN All Time TV's Hits Variety Show. The show's producers recommend they name themselves after the British Invasion, which was fashionable at the time, and the band chose the name The Buckinghams, which was proposed by a security guard at the station named John O'Pogger. The band selected the moniker because it reminded them of a local landmark, Buckingham Fountain. After being drafted, LaGrosse was compelled to depart in early 1966. Around the same time, bassists Bachman left and Fortuna, now playing bass and shortly going by Fortune when it was misspelled on the record sleeve, returned following a stint with Jimmy V and the Entertainers. The next year, the band acquired their first record contract with local company USA Records and recorded 12 tracks. Several were issued as singles, including I'll Go Crazy, originally sung by James Brown, The Famous Flames, and I Call Your Name, first recorded by The Beatles. However, it was their number one hit, Kind of a Drag, that brought them national attention. Kind of a Drag was written by Chicago-based composer Jim Holvey, who had previously performed with The Mob and spent two weeks at the top of the Billboard Hot 100 in February of 1967. It sold over a million copies and received a gold dip. Carl Bonafade, the band's first personal manager and big band leader, Dan Bella, collaborated on Kind of a Drag. Frank Tizinski arranged the song's horns, and Ron Mallow was the engineer for the initial recording sessions, which took place at Chess Records in Chicago. After this, the band's debut album, Kind of a Drag, was released on USA Records and contained early recordings by the band. Keyboardist McCullis was replaced in late 1966 by Larry Nestor, who lasted in the band for a brief period until being replaced by Marty Greb towards the end of 1966. Around this time, the band members were introduced to James William Gershow, formerly the bassist and tour manager for Chad and Jeremy, who signed them to an Evans Gershow Associates management contract. The Buckinghams were approached by several different record labels before selling on promotion expert Jim Scully, who rapidly landed them a new deal with CBS Records. Gershow kept the band's brass rock style going, and the band had four more top 20 successes in 1967. Don't You Care, which peaked at number 6. Mercy, Mercy, Mercy at number 5. Hey Baby, They're Playing Our Song at 12, and Susan at 11. The Buckinghams were crowned America's most listened to band by Billboard magazine the same year. The Buckinghams and Gershow had many disagreements, notably over the producer's choice to include a psychedelic interlude to the song Susan. With an orchestral climax, the song sounded extremely similar to the Beatles' song A Day in the Life, which incorporated a small section of Charles Ives' Central Park in the Dark. Many radio stations completely skipped this part together, and not many people knew about this version unless you listened to the album version, if you're just a casual radio listener. By mid-1968, the Buckinghams had split with Gershow, and Columbia Records sent staff producer Jimmy Wisner to work on their third album, In One Ear and Gone Tomorrow. Greb, G. Marisi, and Tofano wrote songs for the album. Despite the publication of a new song, Back in Love Again, they were unable to replicate their 1967 success in the absence of Gershow, who moved on to advance another brass rock idea with Blood, Sweat, and Tears and Chicago. Buckingham's Day, which was a celebration in Chicago, was canceled after it was discovered that some of the band members had been jailed for illegal narcotics use. Greb and Fortuna had left by late 1968 and were replaced by keyboardist John Turner and original bassist Bachman, who had joined the band Saturday's Child after leaving the Buckinghams. However, there were no additional hits, and the band disbanded in early 1970. Columbia published Main Chicago, a double compilation album of their older songs, in 1975. Tofano and G. Marisi created the duet Tofano and G. Marisi after the breakup and released three albums for Lou Adler's record company Ode Records before creating a touring band for their second album. 
drummer John Polos, who had won the duo's Ode Records re- recording deal, went on to manage a number of rock bands, notably the Boys from Illinois. Polos died on March 26, 1980, of drug-related cardiac failure. Later that year, Chicago's WLS radio programming head John Garron phoned Jim Reese and invited the Buckinghams to rejoin for Mayor Jane Burns' Chicago Fest event. Jim Reese, Fortuna, and Tofano performed on the Navy Pier rooftop stage with drummer Thomas Farr and organist John Camelot. Marty Greb turned down the opportunity to join them since he was on tour with the band Chicago at the time. The original trio of members continued to perform at select Chicago events for the following two years. When Tofano chose to return to California in early 1983 to be, pursue a career in cinema, Jim Reese and Fortuna agreed to tour as the Buckinghams. Jim Reese, Fortuna, John Dewish, who played the guitar, Tom Taylor on keyboards, Tom Shekel, who played drums and any other percussion, and two female backing singers, Laurie B. Lewis, who later joined the Mamas and the Papas, were part of the 1983 Buckingham's lineup. Deutsch, Taylor, and Unger were dropped in 1984, and Gene Marisi, who was now in charge of lead vocals, returned to playing guitar as well, and Camelot appeared on keyboards with Lewis on vocals and backing keyboards. The Buckinghams joined the Turtles, the Grassroots, and Gary Lewis and the Playboys, who I did a video on, and the link will be in the description below. They joined them on the Happy Together 1985 tour the next year. That same year, they issued their return album, A Matter of Time, on Red Label Records, which had one single promo release, Veronica, and they joined the Turtles on their Happy Together tour in the United States, alongside the Grassroots and Gary Lewis and the Playboys. Lewis and Camelot quit the band in early 1986 and were replaced by Bob Abrams, who on guitar and vocals, and Bruce Soboroff on keyboards and vocals. Mercy, 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 a collection, a new greatest hits collection issued by Sony Music Entertainment, the current owner of Columbia Records, was published in 1991. Sony Music has continued to release the Buckingham's Columbia Records as well as those previously released by USA Records. The Buckinghams commemorated their band's 30th anniversary with a concert in Chicago's The Vic Theater in 1996. The performance, hosted by DJs Dick Biondi and John Records Landecker, was shot and published as a video named Off Their Rocker. The Buckinghams were also part of the Solid 60s tour, Solid Gold 60s tour, along with Tommy James, The Turtles, Gary Puckett, and The Grassroots. The Buckinghams released their first Christmas album on the BML label, The Joy of Christmas, in November of 2008. In May of 2010, Abrams and Shekel left the Buckinghams lineup to be replaced by Dave Zane, who did guitar and vocals, and Bruce Penn, who had played with several groups including the Crying Shames. In July of 2011, concerts began for the second Happy Together reunion tour. The band continues to tour and perform regularly to festival audiences and sold out shows before COVID, obviously. They remained acts for casino venues throughout the country and performed the national anthem at a Chicago Cubs game and a White Sox game as well. Former keyboard slash vocalist slash songwriter Greb has played with Chicago, Bonnie Raitt, The Weight Band, and Dave Mason, and has also produced CDs for independent musicians, including Peach. Unfortunately, on New Year's Day of 2020, Greb died and was later buried in Chicago. And that's it for the Buckinghams as of June 2021. We'll see if they go back on touring with the Happy Together Tour, if they do that again. We'll see. Those guys may be too old by now, so you never know. The Buckinghams are still a band as of June 2021. So, yep, thank you for watching, and if you guys haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Who should I do next? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you in my next video.